Blessings, everyone. This is Chris Kendall from the rawadvantage.com, registered holistic nutritionist, raw food lifestyle coach, and raw chef. Today, we're blessed to have Dr. Doug Graham back with us. How's it going, Doug? Hey, Chris, great to see you. Another beautiful day begins. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and we're going to dive here into uh, the series that we've started on I Can't Do 80, 10, 10 Because... We did a couple in the past. So if you haven't seen those, you're going to want to check that out and a whole bunch of other previous videos with Doug. If you don't know who Doug is, I don't know where you've been sleeping, but I'll have a whole laundry list of amazing interviews and videos of Doug. Doug. I, yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. But we're stoked to have you here again day, today, Doug. And um, we're going to pop right into it. I've heard many excuses why people can't do 80 10 10. Um, and one that I've heard often, which I find kind of funny because I'm from Canada myself, but I've heard it's just too cold where I live. What do you, what do you think yeah. about this? <laughs> yeah. Um, Paul Nissan back 20 years ago or something answered that question uh, when it was just asked about raw foods and, and he's, he's a pretty sharp guy. Mm. And, and Paul said, well, if it's, if it's, too cold to eat raw foods in the winter is it too hot to eat cooked food in the summer yeah and and of course people keep eating cooked food in the summer they have plenty of hot food in the summer yeah uh, and and plenty of cold food in the winter they just pick which cold food it's going to be it's going to be cold beer and cold ice cream i mean ice cream sales don't go down particularly you know, and, and beer sales don't go down just because they go up, if anything. <laughs> but the interesting thing to me is, is that people are talking about the weather outside. They're not talking yeah. about the weather in their house. Yeah. I mean, in the summertime, it's somewhere around 70 in my house or some close to 20, if you use that system. And, and in the and in the winter time, it's somewhere around 70 in my house or close to 20 uh, yeah. if you use that system. And I mean, I look over at my thermometer right now, it says 18.7. So, yeah. and that's t shirt weather. So, yeah. So it's comfortable in my house. And I'm going to eat my food in my house. <laughs> so it doesn't matter whether it's, three degrees outside or minus 30 or plus 25 uh i'm eating my food in my house yeah and i i find it interesting because i i think about like if i had a goldfish mm -hmm. you know and i and i lived in northern canada somewhere um, I would feed the goldfish goldfish food. And if I moved to Mexico City, I'd feed the goldfish goldfish food. No, avocado. No, you'd feed them avocado <laughs> if you're Mexico. <laughs> you know, and, if, and and there's polar bears all over the world in, in zoos, unfortunately. But there's polar bears all over the world. And wherever they are, they get fed polar bear food. Uh, you know they don't they don't start eating nuts and berries just because they're in the san francisco zoo <laughs> and, you mean the climate doesn't completely change their uh, physiology and anatomy yeah exactly <laughs> exactly so my design is to be a low-fat raw vegan i mean this is what this is where i i think of it like a nascar or a formula one car where they get a special mix of fuel to get it just perfect, you know, for, for drag racing and different again for uh, F1. And, and I, we're, we're designed for us a, a specific mix of fuel uh, yeah. that's, that's heavily favors simple carbohydrates preferably glucose and fructose in fruit with the associated nutrients. And anything else just clogs up our system. Yeah. It slows the system down. It, it advances and accelerates the aging process. It, 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 it compromises recovery 
uh, whether that's physical, emotional, chemical, spiritual, or any other way, it compromises our recovery. Uh, and it and it just keeps us depressed a bit uh, from reaching our fullest potential. No, you're not going to die if you eat popcorn, you know, and you're not going to die if you eat hot buttered popcorn. But if you try to just live on it, you're not going to thrive like you would if you were to eat the ideal few, the ideal foods for humans, fruits and vegetables. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't even care. I guess if I had to sit out on a Chicago street corner in January in a howling, you know, some howling snowstorm. Yeah. And then get told to, Here's some, here's some grapes that are freezing on the plate. Eat these. You know? yeah, yeah. I I would feel like I wanted something warm, whether it was something warm to eat or something warm to hold, or some place warm to go. I yeah. would want warmth. I can understand that. But if I'm inside my cozy home, I. Basically, um, I keep my home comfortable. Yeah. And in comfortable temperatures, I can eat whatever I want to eat. Yeah. Uh, and certainly, my preference is to eat foods that leave me feeling really good. Foods, foods that have no downside. And that's got to bring me back to fruits and vegetables. So I know... You know, and we've talked about it before. People give excuses, um, and the excuse doesn't really have to hold water. No, no, absolutely not. Just they at least in their mind, excuse. without yeah, thinking. They gave it an does. excuse. That's yeah. all. It, that's all that matters. Once they've given their, they, they've got a rationale, or they've got an excuse, or they've got a reason, and and they've expressed it. Well, that should be good enough. We're not supposed to think about it or add it up and. Um, and I, I just, to me, it's kind of funny because I'm going, okay, why am I eating 80, 10, 10? Why am I eating as a low fat, raw vegan? Why fruits predominate? Why do I go to the effort to go buy a couple hundred persimmon now that it's finally persimmon season, mm -hmm. you know, and, and have them in the house and it's, and yes, it takes up space in my kitchen and all of a sudden my house is filled with food and, is that neurotic? No, that's like I've got enough food to get through the next few days and maybe uh not half have to monkey, half up. squirrel. And <laughs> and I go like what's the outcome that I want to have? Yeah. For yeah. me, it's what's the outcome? Yeah. I wanna I wanna be able to have a good night's sleep. I want to be productive during the day. I want to be clear headed. I want to be active. Uh, I want to have energy to go do things. <laughs> uh, I want to be so on top of my game that if somebody else needs help, I can help them. Yeah. It's a joy to be able to, to serve others. Yeah. I like that. I like being helpful. Yeah. Uh, if I have the choice of caregiver or care getter, I'd rather be a caregiver. Yeah. And yeah, me too. And so I look, I look and I go, okay, could I stay up all night watching YouTube videos? Well, yeah, I could. It's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. It's easy to get just down that oh, rabbit yeah. hole, right? It's designed to, yeah. Easy. Yeah. But then I'm not going to be worth much tomorrow. So yeah. I don't do it. Yeah. And then do I like looking out of my garden and seeing a green grass lawn? Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. But the oak trees drop in oak leaves. So I go out and rake them. And yeah. I like having the ability to go rake them. Mm -hmm. And I rake them whether I want to or not, because I like having green grass in my front garden. Yeah. Yeah. So it's as simple as that. I I I really dislike indigestion. 
Yeah. I really like having a clear sinuses and clear digestive system and and a clear mind. I like those things. Mm -hmm. And so I eat in a way that supports that. Yeah. And if unless I it's cold outside. Unless it's cold outside. <laughs> if it's cold outside, then what do you do? <laughs> no. Yeah. I tell I tell you, Doug, I uh you know even when I'm in Canada and you know it's minus 40, like you said, I'm I'm not in an igloo outside. I, I run to my car and then go to another warm place and then I'm you know, yeah, sure, maybe I won't dress up really, really warm and go out and do some stuff if it's really cold outside. But even when I worked outside, you know, before I started the raw advantage 13 years ago now, I, I worked for a short period of time as a raw vegan in minus 30 to minus 45 weather building uh, apartment buildings and houses. So I was I was outside in the snow. And I still easily maintain the lifestyle. All I did is I had a big banana smoothie before I went because I needed some extra calories. And then I brought a thermos full of really warm Daterade. So just hot water and dates blended. And when it started to get a little bit you know, too cold around 10 o'clock, so I'd already been out there working for three hours, I sipped on that. And then I went into the mall and ate a whole bunch of persimmons because it's in the fall uh, and maybe some bananas at lunch. And, you know, I'd still be working an eight hour day in minus 35, minus 40, but I kept warm because I was supplying the extra calories and I was dressed real warm and I was active and busy and didn't, didn't bother me. And I understand fully. And, and you said some really interesting things there. And for me, it's, it's, uh, what do you want to do? Yeah. You know, really, what do you want to do? And if people don't want to, they'll come up with excuses or reasons or rationale, however they want to play it. Yeah. And and if that's sufficient, fine. Uh, for me, I'm looking at it going, I'm in an airplane. It's, you know, we're we're 40,000 feet in the air. It's it's minus 70 outside. Yeah. Right? It's cold outside, baby. Yeah. And and people are still having cold drinks. Yeah. And the airplanes, they're still serving fruit plates. Yeah. And people are eating an apple or whatever they're eating. And and nobody's thinking, well, it's minus 70 out. I better not have a beer. Yeah. 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 Uh, what does it really matter? What it matters is I can understand if it, if I was outside at minus 70, I might not want to pop a cold beer. No. Yeah. I might not want to eat some ice cream at that time. There, there's something but, you've said. But you, some... you make a really good point, Chris. You make a really good point that people think raw food is cold food. Yeah. And yeah. raw food isn't automatically cold. No. Raw food could be room temperature which is comfortable raw, raw food could be warmed up a little bit like you did with the dates and water. And I've done that too. And Rosie does that too. Blend bananas and dates and water. And mm -hmm. war, you know, it's just a little bit warm is a world of different from oh, yeah. a little bit cold. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, when food comes off of a dehydrator where it's, where it's, I don't even know what's that 45 to 50 degrees or somewhere in that ballpark you know uh, about 120 for people using fahrenheit and, and and that is very warm since i mean it's only 100 degrees in your mouth yeah uh, so whichever way i mean that's if you eat it right away it's quite warm mm -hmm. it's surprisingly warm i know when my daughter was little and we, she got food off the dehydrator she had to wait for it to cool down because she didn't like it even yeah, that too. warm yeah yeah, it's what you're used to, right? So, is there a, is, is is the weather really a? You mean it's a hot day, so you just don't eat at all because it's too hot to eat? Uh, not me. I, I days I'm days that I'm active, I like to eat. Yeah, yeah. I've heard, I've heard you say before. And I love this as well as, uh, you know, we're tropical beings and no matter what environment we're in, we create an artificial tropical environment Absolutely. around us. 
you know, with yeah. our house or with our clothing when we're going outside. Like we, yeah, we need to night maintain with that your bedding. temperature. Yeah, bedding, all that stuff. And it's just keep and it and we call it tropical. Um, subtropical might actually be more accurate. Yeah, if you if you're a, you know, want to get that technical about it, uh, but comfortable is the key. Yeah. If it feels comfortable, now the thing is, a lot of people say, "Yeah, I'm comfortable." I don't know if you if you ever had that experience where you go into a restaurant or you go into a movie and you, and you go, man, it's cold in here. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's comfortable for people who are running a fever. It's yeah. comfortable for people which on cooked food you're running a fever as a general rule. Mm -hmm. um, it's comfortable for for people in a three piece suit or something. You know, if you're wearing a ton of clothes. Uh, but in order for the temperature to be comfortable for you, naked. Mm -hmm. It's got to be a lot warmer than it is for you with clothes on. Yeah. And and even with not a lot of clothes on, that's a good 10 or 12 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit difference. Yeah. Okay. Um, so five to 10 degrees centigrade difference between where you're comfortable with a bit of clothes on and where you'd be comfortable wearing nothing or next to nothing. Mm -hmm. Which, which brings us back, you know, so what temperature would your house be if, if you lived in a nudist concept, if we said, yeah. okay, let's be natural about things. We're not going to wear clothing. Uh, your house would probably be, uh, close to 30 yeah yeah probably be close to 30 degrees and 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 or in the mid 80s for the people who use fahrenheit and uh, and much less than that and you'd be chilled yeah yeah <laughs> in which case if your food is room temperature it's certainly not cold mm. and it makes no difference what the temperature is outside yeah yeah yeah, I, I, you know, I could almost even see, too, that in the summer months, people might have their house a little bit cooler with their air conditioner on. And in the winter months, they might have their heater on. And I mean, nowadays, I guess we do have the ability to, like, keep it at exact you know number. But I, I wouldn't doubt that there are some people that even have their house a little warmer in the winter and a little cooler in the summer to offset. Maybe, maybe not. No matter how we slice it. <clears throat> your food doesn't change the food you are designed for doesn't change mm -hmm. just because you move north or south yeah if you move up in altitude or down in altitude the food that we're designed for what does change perhaps is a little bit how much liquid you need to take in yeah so if you, if you go to a very very dry environment especially one that's at great altitude I mean, you're going to lose moisture quickly. Mm -hmm. you know, if you go to a super hot place and exercise, you're going to lose water more quickly. Yeah, You might have to replace a bit more water. Uh, but as far as what is our natural food, that simply does not change. <sighs> Which takes away probably a whole bunch of excuses. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, it does. Um, you know, it, and it keeps leading us back to our ability to respond. Okay. So, our ability to respond to whatever it is um, is what, if we were to change, play with the word a little bit, response ability mm. we have we have an ability to respond to things mm -hmm. now if it's cold i put on another layer of clothes um, but we also have responsibility to live responsibly uh, to take care of ourselves because 
you know the signs that say it's a drug-free zone or something uh speed limit signs for instance are great like you'd love to get in a car and just drive whatever speed you want to go yeah yeah but they they give us there's a certain social responsibility act responsibly drive responsibly drink responsibly whatever they you know however the word is being used uh we, I guess we have to start the next slogan, which would be to eat responsibly. Yeah. yeah. But I, so far, people haven't caught on to eat responsibly. Yeah. Like, like as if they're, they're creating their own health. They're affecting others. Um, you know, if, you, if you're driving your car and you have a stroke while you're driving, because mm -hmm. the food you ate resulted in a stroke, you you could you're very dangerous to everybody else going yeah. 60 miles an hour you know and you struck out so you know the, the crazy yeah the crazy thing with that I, I i bet you that's going to come like you know eat responsibly but it may be uh in relation to co2 more than huh. uh health yeah. you know yeah sure sure it's coming right yeah it's coming Luckily, I mean, luckily, uh, you know, fruits and vegetables require a lot less or create a lot less uh, greenhouse gases compared to a lot of other foods. So we're probably still low on the list compared to some other people's processed and animal laden diets. We, we may we may fit those CO2 guidelines easier. Well, you would think so. Um, you would think so. But the the CO2 guidelines, at least as far as I'm understanding what's going on, is is a complete reversal of the way things actually are. They're, they're telling us to reduce your carbon footprint. Um, and, and, and yet carbon dioxide is, is exactly what plants need yeah. in order to manufacture oxygen for us. Yeah. So, so if we want to generate uh, a good situation for plants, we increase carbon dioxide production. Mm. Uh, no, I don't hear this being talked about a lot in that in that world of, you know, <clears throat> let's come up with new taxes to <laughs> to, to, make, to make global warming seem like a real thing. Um, I don't know. I saw a very funny meme the other day where somebody was making fun of somebody else because, because the other person didn't believe in any conspiracy theories. Mm -hmm. And, and I think those are, that's getting harder and harder to find people who believe in no conspiracy theories at all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, sure. We have to pick and choose because there's now hundreds to choose from, but, but, um, At the day's end, all that matters is that you took the best care of yourself that you could yeah. or that you felt was appropriate. And so you were responsible in order to generate a higher level of health, a higher level of awareness, um, a higher ability to respond to conditions, whether that's whether that's respond to an injury or a threatening situation or to, or to, you know, foods you ate or to other people's needs, your ability to respond is increased as you live more responsibly. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, and then you're a, an active participant in helping others, which is, is uh, yeah, highest calling many people would say. cold outside i don't think i should no i can't buy that one it's, no. it's plenty comfortable in here i'm gonna i'm gonna eat dinner inside today but i did right, take well... my, but i did take my lettuce out of the fridge yeah well that's that's a useful tip right you know if it's cold outside and you're feeling cold to eat your food at room temperature or above you know not to just take it out of the fridge and eat your everything out of the fridge immediately i'm i'm going to have oranges in my salad tonight i'm gonna mm. i'm gonna peel them blend them throw them in the salad yeah as part of the salad dressing 
and the oranges came inside last night. Yeah. Because yep. I store them outdoors, uh, at least until the serious winter comes. Yeah. Um, I store them outside, and they it's like cold storage. It's yep. perfect. But I don't want to use ice cold oranges. No. So I brought them inside. Today's oranges are already in the house. And so there'll be room temperature, and that's perfectly acceptable. Um, if you want to warm up soup by, by blending some vegetables and putting them in a pot and stirring with your hand until it feels warm, mm -hmm. be my guest. Yeah. Be my yeah. guest. But when it starts feeling uncomfortably warm on your hand, yeah, it's time to it, – the food's hot enough at that point. It doesn't yeah. need to – you don't need to cook it. Yeah. But there's lots of ways to warm them up. Elisa Markowitz did a book years ago called "Warming Up to Warming Up to Raw Foods." Mm -hmm. Oh, cool! I'm interested in that one. Yeah, and um, I think she wrote that book maybe 25 years ago, something like that. Warming up to raw foods, warming up to living food. I think she said warming up to raw foods. Uh, Alyssa Markowitz is her name, and and uh, she's a noted raw food chef. But all she showed lots of ways to to warm up the food a little bit. Yeah, and that, that's all viable. Yeah, yeah. that's all well, viable. As we said, you know, it seems that a lot of people make up excuses as a way to just show that they their mind is already made up. But uh, but we can we can pretty safely say this isn't really a viable excuse if your mind is open. <laughs> yeah, it's where where can we go with that, Chris? It, there's so many angles um, where people don't want to do it, so they'll then come up with a reason. Yep. To me, if you don't want to do it, that's fine. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it's fine. I I think people will come around in time. More people will want to do it. Uh, I think more people are catching on to the idea of vegan and raw vegan and low fat raw vegan all the time. Those movements are growing. Movements, they're they're in segments of the population that are getting bigger all the time, mm -hmm. and that's a good sign. Uh, but I understand wanting to do what you're used to. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and whatever you're used to, that seems normal and natural. Uh, you certainly don't want to give up anything that you're used to or that you appreciate. Mm -hmm. uh, and even when I describe eating cooked food as banging your head against the wall, mm -hmm. uh, there's plenty of people who want to keep banging their head against the wall. <laughs> they just want to bang, man. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's true. And but we do, you know, we're creatures of habit in many ways. You know, we'll, if you sit in the same chair two or three times when you come into a room, that's going to become your chair. That's the chair you sit in. Yeah. And, and uh, we're used to do, we're used to creating food in a certain way or having it be a certain something. I mean, if you always, always ate food at a certain temperature, and then even that temperature just varied a little bit. You would the same food, but just a slight change in temperature. And you go, oh no, this is this isn't the way I like it, or this isn't the mm -hmm. way I'm used to. It's totally different. Used. Right? It's crazy. Yeah. And and so we're asking people to be open to the idea of change. Yeah. Um in terms of a lot of food considerations yeah be be willing to change for the better for the healthier uh for for their own self-improvement for weight management purposes um for enjoyment and satisfaction and satiation uh, for sports performance uh, for mental performance for emotional awareness mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, I never wanted to be a raw fooder. No, no, me neither. I was like, I Thanks, never, Doug. 
Yeah. When I was six years old and I go, well, I want to be an athlete or I want to, I want to have a certain physique or I want to have a, you know, I want to be an expert in something, mm -hmm. but it's never in my life that I go, man, I want to be a raw fooder. <laughs> in fact, I resist the idea of being a raw fooder. Like, I don't want to, yeah. Yeah. but I, but much more than I don't want to be a raw fooder. I don't want to be a sick person. I've been sick. It really sucks. Yeah, I don't want to be a sick person. I don't want to be. Um, I was reading. A, I was reading last night about a guy who's lost both his legs to diabetes, right? Yeah. And and I don't want to be that guy. No. I like my legs. Yeah, absolutely. So if that means that I have to take care of myself in a certain way, like we said, you don't stay up all night because the next day you're just not good for much. Maybe yeah. the next couple of days it takes yeah. a big toll. And the same with food and the same with, I put in something into my head every single day to improve my outlook on life, to, yeah. to better myself, to learn something. Uh, these are all things that are important to me. So I make my choices based on what's important to me on the, on the desired outcomes rather than just that moment of putting it in my mouth. I want to think about, okay, so what are the considerations here? What's, what's going to happen as a result of my doing this? Yeah. And then for the people who just can't, they can't. Certainly, I couldn't until I could, mm. until I was ready, yeah. until I wanted yeah, the, until I wanted that desired outcome, yeah, uh, more than I wanted cheeseburgers or something, yeah, uh, you know, and then and then cheeseburgers weren't that alluring, and then just for fun, I learned how to make raw vegan cheeseburgers so who cares i mean it can be done right. it's not like something that i want to eat over and over and over mm -hmm. but uh i know how to do it if i need to yeah and i can even warm it up so it's <laughs> so it's have... the best of both worlds to me the low fat raw vegan lifestyle is the best of the best of all the worlds yeah no i 100 percent agree and although as you said, too, I, I didn't come into it wanting it from the very get go, you know, I want to do everything. I, I feel dang blessed to be here. And, uh, you know, thank you very much, Doug, for all you've shared. Wow. And, you know, I mean, I have a I have a T-shirt that not very many people have, but I've got a T-shirt uh, I sold for a while called the Mono Man T-shirt. I have it. Yeah. And and I didn't aspire to become Mono Man. <laughs> No. <laughs> I really didn't. I, I mean, yeah. I started talking about mono meals. I remember when we started talking about them and, and uh, it was me and a guy named George and, and we were talking about mono meals and it's the, it, it was so obvious that mono meals made sense. Yeah. So obvious. I mean, it is it like every creature's out there eating mono meals and, and, yeah. Plenty of creatures are out there eating mono diets. Yeah. Plenty. Like yeah. cows. Yeah. yeah. Antelopes. And I mean, they just graze, right? On whatever's and and very mono diets. And, and I remember feeling like I was in a I was in a car about to be, I was a passenger in a car about to be in a crash that I could see coming. And I'm and I put my hands out in front like the crash is coming and I put my feet out in front and dug my heels into the ground and I'm going, no, <laughs> I don't want to go there. I don't want to become the mono man. I yeah. don't want that because yeah. because I could I could feel the disappointment mm. of all the stimulation going away. Mm -hmm. Really, I don't get to have the excitement all the stimulate like oh i don't get to mix this with this and this with this and this with this and i didn't want to go there man but i couldn't deny how satisfying a mono meal was 
Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I couldn't deny how well it digested and how satisfying it was and how afterwards I felt just fine. It was just, it was just up front thinking like, okay, what's for breakfast? Bananas. Fine. Nobody really cares about breakfast anyway. What's for lunch? Bananas. Okay. I can eat bananas for lunch. What's for, what's for dinner? Bananas. Yeah. Oh, really? I was kind of hoping we'd have something a little more exciting. You know? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I understand that. And I'm not promoting for any business you know like that we need to live on a mono diet no I'm just no. saying like if you haven't had many mono meals they're worth trying because the oh, results yeah. speak for themselves the results are so outstanding yeah. they go you know what maybe i'll have another mono meal yeah well, <laughs> and if you want to have a little more complicated dinner be my guest you want to like you want to uh support yourself at the end of the day and be kind and but if you want to do be kind like don't don't hurt yourself with your food yeah absolutely you know the the majesty of mother nature you know it's like she's got it right you know like it's hard to deny and it, it really always it, it it does kind of confound me sometimes when people take one aspect and say like, oh, well, you know, science this or like, you know, microbiome that. And it's like, yeah, but mother nature has it figured out. Look at all the animals out there. Like it, to me, that's kind of the trump card of uh, logic, you know, is really looking at what mother nature does and uh, how we have lived and evolved over the last however long it's been, you know. We can, it's called cherry picking. Yeah. yeah. You know, and you can you can take a little isolated piece of information and then try to prove your point based on that. Yeah. Uh, the concept when that's done, you know, is uh, grabbing the dog by the tail and then wagging the dog. Yeah. Yeah. And and it doesn't really work that way, you know. There there are toxins in plants. We know this. There's toxins in fruits and vegetables, yeah. even the ones we choose. And, and and the idea that thou shalt not poison thyself, well, intentionally, you're not looking for the biggest dose of poison. In fact, we're looking for the littlest dose possible. Mm -hmm. uh, we want pink, clean pink lungs, but there's thousands of particles in the air. Mm -hmm in every breath of air scientists are estimating we're inhaling roughly 10,000 particles with every inhalation wow that's it's mind boggling to me like 10,000 every breath yeah most of those particles are so tiny that they don't even talk about how many of them do you breathe out but a lot of them you breathe out. Yeah. The rest just get caught up in the mucous membranes and form no problem whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> Until there's particles in the air that aren't supposed to be there. Yeah. You know, when it's when it's smoke and when it's burning things and construction debris and yeah. and you know mold or yeah, or asbestos from buildings being dropped and other things like that so i mean when there's stuff that's not supposed to be there great you know that, that works against you for sure no question but the fact that you were designed to breathe clean air i mean i, I can't imagine anybody arguing oh yeah we're supposed to breathe clean air we're mm. we're made for that yeah uh, but people argue oh no we've we've evolved to eat cooked food yeah yeah. And you can't. The only way, only thing that could possibly happen in terms of that would be you've devolved to yeah. eat cooked food. We've compromised our health in various ways when we eat cooked food. And we do it again and again and again. But you can't evolve to. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah you, it's not it's not evolution at that point. It's, and, it, and you can't evolve to get all the nutrients you need while you're taking in fewer nutrients yeah that doesn't it doesn't happen that way um the idea of that is called alchemy mm -hmm. and alchemy is 
the whole concept of alchemy has been disproven over and over and over and over. It's never been proven. It's always disproven. Mm. But so the I can't idea turn apples persists. into durians? Yeah, turn your apples into durians. Damn it. Yep. Yeah, ain't going to happen. No, no. Sorry. I, I wish. Maybe. Apple flavored durian? Can we? Be pretty interesting. It's a flavor that's not in the durian. <laughs> No, no, absolutely one not. Of the, one of the few. Yeah, I yeah, know it's true. I think some of my favorite durians have been kind of like a, almost almond flavored or uh, custard flavored or custard. vanilla flavored. Yeah, I'll go yeah, with the custard vanilla, nice. custard lemon vanilla. Yeah. Mm, it's pretty amazing. Onion or not, <laughs> it's still amazing. <laughs> but, you know, the persimmon I'm eating are, are amazing. And the figs I was eating a month ago were amazing. And so good. And the grapes have this year a really good year for grapes. And um, had great charmoyas. It's it's somehow I'm not sure why or how, but the pineapple had been just astonishing this mm. year. So mm. I mean, tons of great food, tons of great food, and, and I love that every season. It's new food coming in, new food coming in, month by month by month. We see a new wave of food coming in. And, uh, to me, that's something to look forward to. But I'm probably going to be eating it indoors almost all year round. Yeah, <laughs> me too, man. Me too. Well, thank you, brother. I think we can. Uh, I think we can. We can say that that isn't a viable reason, really. I mean, you can make anything into a reason for yourself if you want to, but. But to make it into a viable reason is a whole nother thing. Exactly. Yeah, I'll, I'll consider that one debunked. <laughs> Fine. All right. You're the Thanks, fact brother. checker on that one. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll take that honorary card. I'll, I'll put the last stamp on it. <laughs> debunked. You heard about the the Zen master who went to New York and asked the hot dog vendor to make him one with everything? No, no. Well, the vendor made him one with everything and and the Zen master paid the vendor. Yeah. And then asked for change. And the vendor said, change comes from within. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. <laughs> uh, and it and it made me think of you because because you know you're into that kind of story but i know you um you go pretty deep and stuff when you're doing i've, wa I've watched your your kendalini <laughs> yeah. i've watched you you know have everybody meditate <laughs> and and i'm pretty clear that that meditation is better than just sitting around doing nothing yeah, <laughs> yeah. how much doing better is... <laughs> <clears throat> um, but if you ever get the opportunity don't teach a wolf how to meditate hmm. he'll become a werewolf <laughs> you know what doug I, I'm, I'm still recording this so i think i'm gonna have to i have to start a doug jokes shorts channel <laughs> <laughs> i hope not <laughs> yeah oh yeah these are these are gonna be up these are up for sure <laughs> they've already been tweeted yeah okay. yeah this is this is the short form content i'm talking about <laughs> great dr doug <laughs> thanks <Bless> doug <laughs> Providing clarity on 801010 with Dr. Douglas Graham. Ooh, don't forget to check out my raw recipes playlist in the top left, the video just for you in the top right. Subscribe for more videos in the bottom right and get your three free ebooks in the bottom left. Grab your free raw recipe app available on iPhone and Android with over 100 free raw recipes, common fruit and vegetable calorie breakdown, freaking raw awesome food combined chart, shopping cart function, and so much more.